Hi, Soul Family. So I've done all of my readings today. I did all the elements and I came out on my patio. You can see it's warm, right? I'm pretty warm. You can see that we have monsoon season. So I came out in, in order to bring Sammy outside, encourage him to come out because it's not quite as hot right now. And I came over to my moonflower. Now, there's a lot of personal messages and, and you guys have to figure out what the message is for you. But I am, the hummingbird is one of my, one of my totems, one of my main totems, right? And the red hawk is the, my spiritual totem, the one that spirit came to me and asked me if I wanted to do the spiritual work. And uh, I mean, all of the totems are, are my totems. They've come to me since I was a little girl. And as they come to us, they all become either permanent totems or temporary totems. But they mean specific things to each of us as well. So I'm in a Pisces moon. I am the Red Hawk. I am the messenger. I'm in a Pisces moon. This is the moon flower. Okay. I came over here and I'm thinking, wait a minute. Where are all the leaves? The leaves are generally like this, right? And they it has a big giant white flower. Well, you guys are gonna get an up close and personal. This is crazy, up co close and personal. I'm gonna move them, but what we have here are sphinx moths in progress. These are the caterpillars. And when I was in Sedona, we were looking at the last, the last reading was the giant sphinx that was facing the Danny DeVito. Right, I call it a Dan. I, I didn't call it Dan DeVito. I had somebody take a picture for me. He goes, "You wanted me to pick, take a picture for you," and I'm like, "Yeah." And I said, "Could you get a picture of me with the the Sphinx and the Iroquois?" Because one looked like an Iroquois. It had like little mohawk, except for it was disguising itself as a different type of Indian. It was wearing a Hopi shawl, so it wasn't. It was pretending to be something that it wasn't. Which these Sphinx moths pretend to be. They're, they're not to be confused with the hummingbird hawk moth. This is a sphinx moth, they're different. So I find it really intriguing that the giant sphinx was facing the Danny DeVito and the message was, are you actually, are you worried about your boss, right? Do you feel inferior to someone? Think of the, the, the show, the old 70s show, I think it was in the 70s, Taxi, and Danny DeVito was the boss. He had a big mouth, big gut, bald head, and he bossed everybody around, right? So are you feeling threatened by this Danny DeVito? Do you see that boss? Do you, not, do you not recognize that you are actually this giant sphinx? You might, that might be your boss in the physical world, right? That might be a person in your family. That might be a partner or an ex-partner. That's a bully. That guy was a bully and you're a giant sphinx, right? But you're not seeing yourself that, that way. And the message was, are you the Danny DeVito Who's who, the Danny DeVito or the Sphinx? Are you actually this giant Sphinx and you see yourself as a Danny DeVito? Or are you actually seeing yourself as Danny DeVito and you're this, wait, are you seeing yourself as Danny DeVito but you're actually this giant Sphinx? Or are you seeing yourself as this giant Sphinx and you're actually Danny DeVito, right? So here they are, I, I, it's amazing. I looked on the ground and that is their droppings and I thought, good Lord, those are huge. Why, because look at the size. Look at the size of them. There's one there, and what drew, it to, drew me to it was this, the, the moonflower, the seed pod was opened, and I saw the one, there's the other, there's two more down there, and they have completely consumed my moonflower. So this is energy vampires, somebody who is feeding on another. Now, for myself, I knew, and I got rid of, of the one, I got rid of the moth. I knew who the moth was and it was time for it to go, right? In my own personal life, I knew. So I'm gonna put you guys up here and I'm gonna, I can't get over the size of those suckers though. Feasting, feasting on my energy, right? So the message, and I'll share it with you guys. I can't get over the size of those suckers. They're gonna go. I'm not gonna kill them because they're my, they're my total messengers. They brought me a message and they're bringing you guys a message as well. So the moth symbolism is what you want to pay attention to because this is going to turn into a moth, a sphinx moth. Now the hawk moth and the sphinx moth, sphinx moth or hornworms, they're called the hawk moths, but they're not the hummingbird hawk moths. There's a difference between the two. The elegant, let's see, um, the hummingbird 
hawk moth. I've seen them flying around in Sedona. They're beautiful. They actually fly in the middle of the day and they're a moth and they have beautiful pink wings and they've got like a long stamen that looks makes them look like a hummingbird. So the moth part of this is telling you, pay attention to the signs that you're receiving. It might be time to adjust your course, right? Are you going in the wrong direction? Are you possibly needing to think about something else? You soon will be receiving good news in the form of a healing of a strained relationship, a resolved health issue, a new career opportunity, an unexpected financial resource, or a romantic proposal. Allow yourself to receive it. So you might be seeing a Danny DeVito when in all of reality, this is a giant sphinx. You might have to adjust your course. Hmm. What has been hidden from you will now be revealed. We're meant to pay attention. Remember I said that one was hiding themselves, right? They were covering themselves up, wearing a Hopi shawl. But they weren't. They were Algonquin. They were an Iroquois. I saw. I saw that on the rocks. So the moth is the master of disguise and is reminding you to be aware that you could be hiding from yourself. Are you using your emotions to keep yourself hidden from others? Is it time that you transform your emotional energy away from drama and into something closer to your heart? Have faith in your journey and trust that although things seem to be complicated right now, you will eventually see the light. Use your heart to guide you. You're the most optimistic of souls if this is your totem. You can find the silver lining in every crisis the light in any darkness and the love in any frustration. Your ability to seek out positive in any situation makes you a good listener for your peers, a great peer counselor and advice giver, as well as highly sought after as a friend. You're popular, generous with your attention and understand the subtleties of the way the universe works for you. You have a gift for attracting what you need in life and have very little difficulty moving through changes and transformations. You find joy in rituals and dance. You know how to use your intuition and you have a great deal of psychic awareness. Now, I will tell you, this is one of my totems. If moth has flown into your dream, possibly in a dream time this has come, it's generally a notice for you to pay attention to the minor details and take care not to overlook things. It might also be suggesting that some unseen irritation may not surface until it's too late. Alternatively, the moth could symbolize your weakness, character flaws, and the fragile state you're currently in. It's putting you on notice that you need to step back and take time to heal before moving forward. That came up a lot today in today's readings. So we had the moth symbolism, and then I, I wanted to see, because it's, um, I wanted to see Sphinx moth. I'm, I'm pretty sure that there was a specific for Sphinx, for, for Sphinx, <laughs> Sphinx moth. I just find it really intriguing that I saw the Sphinx and I, it made a big impression on me when I was in uh, Sedona. And then to find that my moonflowers are completely being devoured by that hawk moth. Hmm. Hmm. My moon is being devoured. So it could be my spiritual twin is also a Pisces moon, right? And I'm the hawk and I'm the moth. So I'm devouring. So hmm, I've got to think about my course of action, right? So we go to, I want to show you guys what they look like when they are, um, when they're developed. I can't get over the size. I can't get over the size. It's just incredible. Um, where is it? Sphinx moth. Let's just show you a Sphinx moth. God. <laughs> I mean, I, I captured some of them last year and I put them in, a, in, in, the, in the aquarium and I, I put a bunch of plants in there and allowed them to, um, I was gonna allow them to, to just live in there. I wasn't gonna kill them. And one by one, they died, all except for one that escaped and I guess <laughs> turned into that. So Sphinx Moth, show us. Okay, image for the Sphinx Moth. Now this is not, this is the hummingbird. Hold on. See, this is the mistake. People think that this is the Sphinx Moth, but it's not. Hold on. The Great Ash Sphinx Moth. I'm going to give you a few more messages here. Hmm. When Sphinx Moth appears as a messenger, it means I'm ready for the message to come in waking or dreaming time. Because it's a combination of butterfly and moth together. 
So the moth and the butterfly totem began to change around over the next while. Butterfly has been there, which is transformation, right? And then there's the moth, the sphinx moth. The moth shows us symbolization of transcend, transcendent or transitioning soul of the living soul's trans, transformational qualities on various levels of their journey. I'm watching all of my messengers go by. The butterfly, they're speaking about seasonal. They don't live the entire year. So their teachings are spring and summer. So this equates to our life as we are longer, in a longer cycle of change, not a short one, like the month, but several years or even decades or two. Having worked with symbolizations together with moon cycle, Hold on, let's, let's skip through. We don't need to go all of this. One of the differences between moths and butterflies is that butterflies' antenna are club-like with long shaft and bulb at the end. And moths are feathery or saw-edged. Antenna is our symbol for sensitivity, awareness, and empathic information that is always readily available to us. If we can slow down the mind enough to feel the emotional intelligence, information that's coming from the energy. Butterflies and moths have many things in common, common but their difference is how we is, is is how we are being guided in their shamanic meanings so basically it's you look at the their, their transformation they, they have a season of growth you see that giant giant moth that's consuming that flower i mean uh hornworm that's consuming that flower and it's actually you think about in alice in wonderland the worm that's the one um, so it talks about the struggle that they go through. So they're, they're eating, they're feeding, they're feeding. Then they go into this cocoon purpose. And do you know that before they emerge into this moth, they turn into a pile of goo. It's very, very weird. So it's talking about the death and rebirth and the struggle that we have going through all of this process. So it's talking about the medicine that we must learn to change. We must learn to change. Then you think about their colors, the grays and the browns. These ones are, are the grays and the browns, and there's pinks as well. Um, what else? So it's talking about transformation, mystical rebirth. Um, it's talking about those who possibly have passed on and now have transformed into a different energy, back into spirit, right? Um, basically, it's about the next progression. So right now, I'm feeding. Somebody's feeding. Uh, right? This is the, this is where they're at. They're they're giant. They've been feeding for quite a while and they're about to turn into a different state. They're about to transform into a different state. So it's talking about the, the awareness that we have. There's the beginning, there's the middle, there's the transformative stage at, at this moment. And then we've, we're going to have a struggle that's going to happen again. So something right now, they're talking about working with the stage that this is the, being presented to us. So something or someone needs my attention or I need someone's attention is what it's showing you because it's about, this is the balance that's happening right now. So someone, it's, it's basically showing me that someone needs my attention, right? I've pushed away and I, I got that quite a bit in today's reading. Somebody needs attention and I need someone's attention. I have said, I want to be seen. I want to be acknowledged. I want to be heard. I don't want to be told to be over here and be quiet and be, I'm a secret. I don't want that, right? So this, this, this one is making itself very, very known. So let me show you um, Sphinx Moth. Sphinx Moth. I brought it up really, really quick. And, and Banded Sphinx, Banded Sphinx. Here we go. It's, this is the one that came to my house. This is what these ones are going to be like when they, I've seen them. Come on. This is the one. It literally was flying around in my house. I've got videos of it. And I and I let it outside and I and I put it up on here because I didn't want to hurt it. And now because I sheltered it, I didn't want to hurt it. And because I sheltered it, it's grown to the place where it's become destructive. So this is a message about boundaries. Sometimes we we don't want to put our boundaries, we don't want to be too harsh with someone right and so we allow something to take place I didn't want to hurt and I spoke about my twin soul who came in my dream with a sword and he said I I'm going to kill him and I said no you're not and he said yes 
And I said, I can take care of myself. You don't need to do that. And he says, but you're not taking care of yourself. This needs to end. And so he said, well, at the very least then, take the sword with you and end this. But I didn't want to hurt somebody. I didn't want to hurt somebody's feelings. And I allowed it to go on for a very, very long time. And it has become destructive. Look what it's done. It fed off of my energy for such a long time. It's made a mess. It's consumed my flowers. And now the message has been played out in front of me. Right? That was my message. I knew. I did end it. I told you guys. I ended it. I, I realized that that sphinx was pointing at that Iroquois, that Algonquin Indian. It was feeding on my energy, and I ended it. And even though it looked very beautiful on the outside, it's actually quite destructive. So there's your message. Sometimes we don't want to say, we don't want to be harsh to people. We don't want to be mean to people. But when spirit tells us it's time to cut something off, this is not near highest good, just because it looks pretty on the outside doesn't mean that it's not very, very destructive to you. If this is not something that's on your spiritual path, you need to step up and say enough is enough. It's done. It's over. That's the end.